this room is really interesting to me because I haven't, um, I don't really think too much about getting inside of it that much. Usually it's more, it stays more as uh, a kind of potential, you know, in my head, something that I'm thinking about more than, than, than uh, involved with literally. So that uh, the idea of sitting in it and talking about it with you is, is sort of a funny thing. My work seems to occupy a funny space between being an object and being a space, between being a solid mass that one can uh, hold within the view of the eye and at the same time being something that uh, surrounds you and you cannot take in one glance. That funny sort of ambiguous space, I think, has a lot to do with uh, my own perception of myself uh, as a physical entity moving through the world. Some of the fig some of the figures are just purely. Uh the process, I think, in a way. They just have to do with the, uh, the steel and the contour and, and the feel of the steel and the edge of the steel and its plasticity you know, or its hollowness. The fact that all the pieces have these kind of parts to them is something that's fascinating to me. This is kind of each element is discrete and when it's taken apart can be held and can be sort of dealt with in its own way and it is, it is uh, unique and yet when it's combined with something else it forms another identity. There's something that's very nice about the project that before the installation which just had to do with the multitude of parts upwards of two or three hundred different parts lying around without their identities completely intact uh, as they are in this room and just dealing with them as as uh, shapes and forms, potential identities that aren't really completely formed. Some of the work just has to do with bending the steel so that this spring affair over here is just almost like a test of what can be done with the steel. And others have a real body relationship for me that have to do with some part of me mirrored in the work either my torso, my midsection or my midriff, parts of my face, parts of my, my legs and extremities. This thing I call a cheese stick because uh, oh, it's for obvious reasons the perforations make it look a little bit like a piece of Swiss cheese. It has all of the, the uh, all the holes represent all of my bodily appendages or orifices, and uh, they're laid out on this pole. Which I can show you. It's my fingers here on the edges, the ends of the pole. If I held it up to my face, I have my nostrils here and my mouth below it. And if I rolled it up, I find my eyes and slightly down into the sides are my ears in these small holes here, like so. Then there are two holes that are my breasts here. Also, I have on the center section what would be my feet, and these are big toe and small toes, and big toe and small toes on each side. If I hold the pole vertically, front of myself. There are three holes, one at the top, which is my navel, another one which is my penis height, and another one which is my anus height at the bottom. I was real fascinated with this because I think that it's like a sort of a reasonable way of coming up with an unreasonable looking thing. It's like a walking identity like a stick or something.
darkness and the isolation of the sweat house are sort of a distinct contrast to the kind of activity and the kind of ex, uh, eccentrism and the kind of extroversion that, that I think I always sense in the little principles. Now I think that if the sweat house stood by itself without the little principles, the, it would be denuded in a way. It would really be, it really would lose a lot of its uh, of its protection, and I suppose it would be much more vulnerable as an idea and also as an object.